Okay, everybody, so it's been a long time, but what I decided to do after looking at lots of videos about new tactical games is I decided to try to get a nice, cool tactical game that's kind of newer, at least to me. Everything I have is from 1975. And I looked at videos from Zilla Blitz and Hissy Cat Studios and Stuka Dave and a bunch of others and everyone talks about this last 100 yards series and they say that it's really interesting and fun to play and has an interesting mechanic about timekeeping and about how combat is resolved and about this how you basically how they how they confront simultaneous movement which is very different and um, I like Pacific stuff, so I bought the last 100 yards, third volume, which is Solomon Islands. It's really cool. It's got lots of neat stuff in it. Um, and the rules and everything are very similar. There's slight changes with the Japanese players, what they're doing, etc. cetera. But um, I started working with it, and the only issue I had with it, which is not the fault of the game, but the... There's such a tremendous amount of the difference in the maps compared to what's on video, most of the cases. Most of the videos you see are all about the last hundred yards, the first volume. And everything's flat. There's a hill here or there, kind of a pocket of forest here and there. But this thing is the Pacific, and it's just loaded with very high elevations, lots of forest and groves. Um, so it, it got to the point where all of these 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 maps are just wonderful but i'd start playing on it and i'd get really confused really fast probably because i'm not that bright but you know when you look at something like this guy this looks this looks so cool but you've got huge amounts of hill and lots of forest and how do you actually play in that what do you what do you do it's also got normal things like this but in terms of coming up on the enemy mortar fire all these things seem a lot more complicated with this. And there is no map in here that's like a nice flat plane that, to practice on when you don't know what the heck you're doing, which is my situation. So, I sprung for... I love, the game is going to be great, and I did try to play it a little bit, and I had fun. I just think that I need to practice on something else to get the mechanic down. So, what I did was... Didn't tell my wife, and I got... The, um, one of the original last hundred yards games uh, because it has it gave me the best chance to have sort of general knowledge based on what other people have done online etc uh, etc et and so this game um, is full of all kinds of goodies um, you know it's exactly what you would expect from this game lots of neat stuff going on and uh, what I want to do is for my own sake really set up a couple of issues of how the game is played. This is mostly for, to, to, so that when I come back to this game two years from now, I can go look at my videos and figure out how it works. Because I find that reading the directions while they're clear, you've got to speak legalese. It's very difficult for me anyway to grind through the directions and figure out what's going on. So the videos on YouTube are amazing. There's plenty of them out there. My video, this video is not going to give you much different probably less than some of those, but this is really for me, and if it helps somebody, fantastic. So I'm gonna set this up a little bit and try to explain the basic mechanics of it, so um, the way I understand it anyway. And I please invite people, if anyone sees this, and I make errors, which I likely will, please put those alterations and comments down at the bottom so that everyone can learn. Anyway, let me set this up and then we'll, we'll, we'll come back. Okay, so just to sort of get things started, talk about just in general. I mean, the most important thing to figure out is how these various parts actually work. And everybody wants to know really how you play the game, how you'd make combat and things. But to begin with this game, you have to pay attention to how a group, a combat group is sort of put together. So what you have basically is um, a leader who has um, some abilities and you have three little squares that represent four little guys on each and these are all part of this this three in here is all means this third platoon I guess and these are little subunits of that platoon 
So this guy is in control of these three guys, which is fantastic. Um, in general, the important numbers on these are this green number is the inherent firepower of the group. That little sub superscript is the range. And this is their, the six over here on the right, lower right, is their morale or cohesion, everyone look at it. And the combat will basically be resolved with the die roll, and you're gonna try to, anything above that number, then the unit is broken. The unit is, is their, their, their morale is messed up, however you wanna look at it if you're an old squad leader fan. So that's kind of how combat goes. And what you're gonna do is, with the firepower that they have and the range, well, just the firepower, and a die roll, you're basically going to add the firepower to the die roll. And if you get above that value, um, you, you, uh, you cause damage. And I mean, that's you know, a, a very simplistic way to look at it, but that's basically what you're going to do. So for example, if somebody was firing at these guys with a firepower of one, and they were within a certain distance, and we'll talk about it in a second, you're just going to roll the dice get a two, okay, get a two, and say two plus one is three. Look, uh, if that other group was one, two plus one is three, that's below this six, so they're fine, nothing's happened. And that's, that's the most basic form of combat there is, it's very simple. What you do, of course, is modify that die number, which is gonna include inherent firepower then you're going to say plus a value that's going to take into account distance, plus a value that's going to take into account what's the terrain you're on, plus a value that's going to take into account if they are being suppressed or being fired on by somebody else. All these will add pluses or minuses to the die roll. So you'll end up saying one plus whatever your die roll is, but then plus all these little modifiers that come up, which are basically based on some tables and things. And once you get involved with this, it's very easy to do. Now, what would happen if you're in combat and one of these guys gets, you know, you, you get an eight, let's say. Um, when you modify everything, it's an eight, it's above a six. So this guy is um, in trouble. So what he does is you turn him over, just as is typical in most of these kinds of games. And this represents this unit that is um, broken or out of cohesion or they're disrupted in some way. So they're not dead, but they're like, whoa, wait a second. They kind of drop down low, they're hiding, they're really confused. They can get back into good graces by on another turn by rolling a number that is, in this case, six or below, and then they can turn back over. If they, however, are hit again by a fire and it, they and they don't pass this little cohesion check, they get a seven or a ten or something like that, something above this, then they are eliminated. And that's where these little guys here come in play. So when a guy is eliminated, that means you know you don't turn him over again. He's gone. And notice that there's four little guys on here. What you do is you take him away, and then you have these. These represent basically, you know, if you look at it, it kind of makes sense. There's four guys here, here's two here, two here. They combine to make one. Two guys, two guys, they combine to make one. So what you do is, and these are each called a step, by the way, okay? A group like this is two steps. A step is two guys, okay? So a step, a step, two steps, two steps, okay? And a leader is no step. There's not two guys there, just so you, just so you know. Now, what you would do then is, put these into a cup, randomly choose, because the numbers are slightly different. A lot of people have said this, but if you look at these numbers, they all look really similar, but um, they might have differences. Like here's one guy who's this, these two, their morale is only five, everybody else is six. So you randomly choose one of these. And remember, since these guys got eliminated, that basically means two, in the game abstractly, two of them got killed. So now when you bring these guys back and you randomly choose this, these are the two guys that are left. And because they are still under duress, you put them in like this. So they are still in a depressed situation, uh, but there's only two of them, meaning that, you know, again, some of their guys got killed. So that's how these come together. And that's the point of having these little things, these little extra groups here. You can also um, voluntarily split up um, one of these little 
one, three, or one, two, or three here. That's what these little numbers are. You can decide during a game to split this up into two and go surround somebody or something. So you can do that as well. But anyway, so that's generally how these are put together. The Germans or the Japanese, they're all very much the same. Um, but this is how this works. The leader can, of course, bring some help with his cohesion. Like if he was in the same hex as these guys here, theirs is only five, his is six. He could help them survive a particular um, clash. <coughs> he wouldn't really help these guys or these guys because they all have the same cohesion. They're all six. And anyway, we'll talk about that later if and when we come to it. Um, so that's the general, that's the gist of how these things are put together. So now I want to do is show like an actual firing thing with some other guys. <coughs> Excuse me. And take into account how you'd actually do combat. Okay, so here we set this up fictitiously. All we're going to do is run through how a combat, how a, a fight would actually occur. And we're going to need our little combat table. You get two of these um, per, you know, get two of these in a game so that everybody can have it. This has terrain modifiers on it. It has all kinds of stuff. It has assault tables, which we'll get to later. But we're just going to basically be using this table up here, which is a small arms die roll modifier table, which is basically taking into account the range of, a, of, a, of a, an object that you're shooting at. And these numbers here are basically what your little separate subscript or superscript, is it a sub? It's a superscript number that's next to your inherent firepower. Um, and we'll talk about how that works. So what I've done here is put these little German guys in the woods. I put these American guys in the woods and I put these guys, sadly, in the open. So. Um, if we were going to fire, we're not going to go into the, the, the um, quite yet the um, talk about the initiation phases and the activations and all that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this is just the fire because people want to find out how this works. What you're going to do is say, all right, let's say the Germans are going to fire. They got a machine gun here. Now, that machine gun has an inherent firepower of one. Okay, it has a range of twelve. And I'm going to shoot at these guys who are in the woods. So I'm going to be one, two, three, four, five, six away. Okay. So what I do is I say, this guy has a firepower of 12. I go to the 12 on this table. I said they're six away. This is the number of hexes away, four to six. You come over here and you see a, ne a, a, a negative one. That's a die roll modifier, a DRM. That means Whatever I roll, I'm going to subtract one from it. Okay, so that's important to remember that. The other modifier is going to be they're in the woods. In the woods, over here, you get a minus one as well. Okay, so this is a terrain a terrain modifier, so you get a minus one. So that means you're going to take minus one plus minus one. It's gonna, it's gonna be in there. Let me take a piece of paper because it's better to actually show you. Um, I'll show you what's happening. So what you're gonna do is say, all right, um, the inherent firepower of my little machine gun is one. So there's one. Okay. I'm going to add things to it. I said I'm six away and I'm shooting into woods. The table showed us that this was a minus one for being that far away. We're also going to add a minus one because those Americans are in the, um, in the woods. That gives them a little bit of cover, a little harder to hit them. So you add those up and what do you get? Well, you get one and a minus one is zero and another minus one is a minus one. So you get a total of a minus one. What you do then is you use these little values here. These little, these little pieces come as green ones for small arms fire. You put this on top of the guy you're shooting at. So that's the amount of die row modifier for that group in there. I usually put it on top because I like the way these look, so I put it usually to the side. But anyway, you do that. For the Germans, what some people do is they will then, to keep track of who's done something, they'll turn them corner, kitty corner or something. I use these things that are actually in the game. They have fire action on one side 
and they have a maneuver action on the other. This is going to be a fire action, so I take these and I point them in the direction that I'm shooting, so I remember what I'm shooting at. Okay, so that would be an example. Now, so then to figure this out, we go ahead and we roll our dice and we would add a minus one. So let's roll our dice. We got an eight. Eight minus one is seven. Well, seven is greater than five and six. If you have two guys in being shot at the same time, you look at the one with the highest cohesion to see if everything's okay. In this case, so you wouldn't use this guy, you'd use this guy because it's a six. Well, in this case, eight minus one is seven. It's higher than six, so they are disrupted. When that happens, if you got another guy, two guys in with you, this guy that's left over, he's like, holy shnikes, because he sees that there's fire and he's scared. So you have to roll and see if he beats his cohesion. And if, he, if, he's, if he's equal to or less than his cohesion. Notice he didn't, he got a six. So now this guy also is in that situation. So both of those guys are now disrupted, okay? That's the simplest example of how sort of fire would work. <clears throat> um, and what we'll do is go through a basic turn sequence to show you how they alternate and how, for instance, if these Germans put fire on these Americans over here and they were at a minus one, that means that these guys are actually being suppressed. So when they shoot back, sort of simultaneously, let's say they shoot right back at the, at the machine guns, you're gonna to to take into account that they're being suppressed. So if they were suppressed by, you know, two of these things, that's gonna be a, either one or two, that's a, they're gonna get a minus one modifier on their die roll. Again, that's gonna make it much harder for them to get to this point of die roll and, and, and going above that six, because anything minus is gonna, is gonna help. So they're being, they're being, and then if they had a third, um, piece on them, then a third, a third sighting, so th three times they're getting shot at, essentially, um, that would actually be a minus two. So minus one for one guy or two, because you round up. Here's, th here's three, but you round up, so it's, it's one, um, negative one for the, for the die roll for every two little chits here, and they round up, so it, there'd be a minus two. So, so that would put these guys at a very detrimental situation when they're shooting at something, they're gonna have less chance of hitting it. Anyway, we'll play with that um, in a little bit. We're gonna to try to set this up and show you an actual turn and uh, we'll go from there. All right, to begin any one of these scenarios, and you can also make up your own, you read, let's say you're gonna start with a scenario and you wanna find out how you're gonna set it up. It tells you what groups to set up and you keep in mind how many steps there are, like I said. Like this one has 56 steps for the Americans, 31 steps for the Germans in this case. But this tells you who the initiative is, so we're gonna get an, a, a, um, a, an extra ability to figure out who, who gets to go first, basically. So the Americans get a plus two, which is a nice thing to have. So when they roll their dice to find an initiative for each major turn, the higher die goes first. The Americans get a plus two on their die roll, so it's give them a better chance to, to, to um, go first. Initiative is a nice thing to have. They only get that plus two if on the previous turn they had initiative. But anyway, they'll also tell you, and this is where it gets cool with this game, something called a casualty differential. What this is saying is, basically, you can't just destroy other, the other side and win. You have to have a differential and it's going gonna, it's gonna to depend on where that differential lines up, and it's going to depend on how long it took you to do the whole game. So those two things are going to make you win or lose, essentially. So in this case, it's American 7, German 3, um, and uh, this coordination thing, we'll talk about that in a second. So this one is, is a more complicated one, but I just wanted to show you one randomly to show you what they look like. So you figure out how all that goes together. Now. All that material goes on this board here. So <clears throat> you have this is this casualty tracker. So you have your casualty starts at zero. Don't know what that is. This little guy said that the casualty differential for the Americans was seven. 
and the, the, the Germans was three. In this case, the attacker are the Americans. <clears throat> so attacker versus defender. So casualty differential in the Americans, it says is a seven. So it's way over here. So you put that little casualty marker right up there. The Germans, it says, was three. So you put the Germans right here at three. Um, down here is going to be what the initiative says. You either get the initiative of the Germans or the Americans, depending on what your die roll is in this case. So that makes sense. Um, over here is the time track. So the time track is really interesting because the time track is going to say um, it's going to it's going to tell it's going to help you play the game as well. This gives you minutes. 10 minutes, one minute, and then hour intervals. So each after each playing each game, you're gonna actually figure out how much time elapsed. And in the end, what's gonna happen is when you get casualties on each side, what's cool about this is that this little casualty marker is gonna move back and forth. Like you get an American casualty, it's gonna go this way. You get another American casualty, it goes this way. But then you get a German casualty, so it goes this way, et cetera, et cetera. So you lose the game if this surpasses your casualty limit, if it goes over here on the German side to here, they lose automatically. But this will go back and forth. And when it comes time to actually figure out who wins, you're going to see where this casualty marker is. Let's say it ends up over here. That means you're going to take this number six and you're going to add it to whatever the um, timer went. Let's say it was. 35 minutes by the time you're done playing this. You can take 35, you're going to add 6 to that, so that's 41. You then will look on this and go, where? what happened? It says 0 to 75 is an American victory, so that'd be an American victory. Okay. 76 to 85 would be a draw, 86 plus would be a German victory. So it's really neat that you have to not only get the other guys and cause casualties, but you gotta do it in a timely fashion. Because you can get a lot of their guys' casualties, but then if it took you two hours to do it, um, it's gonna be a German victory, for example. So that's how that's gonna work. So it's kinda it's kinda cool how those how those things come together. So now <coughs> what we would do here, if we were doing this the right way, is we are going to initially roll for um, initiative and it's set on that scenario the Americans get a plus two die roll and what I usually do is I have black is German and green is American and so whatever we get with the American we're gonna roll two we're gonna add two to it so one German three American plus two is five and that was based on what the scenario started out with so that means our initiative is American for the first turn and we have this set up the way it's supposed to be for that particular scenario. And we'll get our times all back to zero because nothing's happened yet. And we're going to come back to this in a second once we set this up and show you um, sort of a full, a full turn. Um, but we set this up ready to go. We now know we're Americans in the initiative and we're going to go from there. Okay, so here I have these guys set up. I hope you can see it. I got my Americans over here in these woods and I got the Germans over here. And the Americans are going to attack, so they got to come across this thing or figure out how to get to it. And they want to use cover to their advantage, etc. Um, but I want to do probably a couple of stupid things to show you what you can do and how the game actually works. We know, based on our, on our last little roll, that the Americans have the initiative. There they are with the initiative. Now, if there was more than one platoon, working, there's only the third platoon, we're using this very simply, you'd actually have a coordination table. And that can allow you to, say, get two platoons moving at once on your first turn, as opposed to doing them separately, which actually is helpful. In this case, we don't worry about this, because on this example, we just got one little platoon. So all we're going to do is start playing around with this and see what a typical turn is. Americans have the initiative. That means they sort of have the ball. <clears throat> now, how this game is played is these guys have the initiative. Mm -hmm. They can do, you know, shoot at something. They can move or they can, they can maneuver a different way. 
um, they can move three essential uh, movement points um, um, at a time, and they are what's called activated. The Germans, in this case, are not activated. The Americans are activated. So the Americans have the initiative. What are they going to do? They could just start barreling across this open field. Now, if they do that, they're going to come under fire. A good thing to do then, remember we had that little example of the firing example, is why not, um, for instance, do they have to worry about these guys over here? Are they in line of sight? So they can't shoot through woods. So that guy isn't in line of sight. That guy might be in the line of sight. But I'm going to say he's probably not, because you've got to go through this hex side here with all this greenery. So these guys initially don't have to worry about them at all, okay? And initially, anyway. When they poke out, they're going to be in trouble. They do got to worry about these guys, because these guys can see them. And there's a fair amount of firepower over here. you got a little unit there, and you got a machine gun. Now, they could just move out directly and take their chances, which... Again, for because of speed, and you want to do, you want to get things done. That's that's an option. But what they're going to do is initially lay down some fire. They can actually see these guys. These Germans are in the woods, but you can see into one hex into the woods. They're not, they're not, you know, it's not like they can't see them. These Americans over here, these Germans can see these guys, and these guys they can't see these guys because they're behind the um, an extra hex of greenery. Okay, but the Americans can see the Germans. They can see them both sets. So what they're going to do is lay down some firepower on these guys in order to make it so when they do shoot back they're going to have negative die roll modifiers to deal with. So they want to do the best they can. First, they're in they they, they can see them. They um, are, they're in the line of sight, okay? Now you look and you see the, the, these guys never have any kind of inherent firepower. They're just there to help with morale and things, and we'll talk about that. These guys have, again, a, a, a inherent firepower of one, a range of eight. So do these guys. They all have the same in this case. But they have a firepower of one. Let's see if they're going to lay down some fire on these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're in range. These guys are the same with, those, with the machine guns. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so they're both within range, which is which is wonderful news. Um, now, they could, for instance, both fire on one of these guys, and then there'd be two um, firing numbers on here, and that would suppress them even more. But well, actually, with two, it would just be one. So it's, it doesn't matter. They should probably put suppression on both of these. So this guy is going to fire here. So I'll put a little American firing thing on here. He's activated. One of his moves he can do is, is fire. He's going to activate by doing that. This guys are going to activate by shooting at those guys. Now let's calculate what they have to do. One, two, three, four, five, six away. So we grab our handy table and we say six away. With a, with a range of eight, six away is a minus three, okay? So, so far, for both of these guys, they both got the same range, I believe, it's a minus three. They each have inherent firepower of one. The Germans are in woods, so they've got to say minus one for the woods. So in both cases, this is the calculation to figure what the, what little chit they're going to put on this little these little guys. So this is minus three plus one is a minus two, and a minus one is a minus three. So you find two, well, you find a minus three little dude over here. Here's one. And it's going to put it on him to make him suppressed. And these guys are going to put the same thing on those guys. So they are now under a single little, um, a single little, uh, a little fire suppression thing. So they're getting fired at. Now minus three, they're probably not going to do any damage to them, but they're being fired at. So now when they fire back, it's going to be harder for them to move. 
or hire, hire them to hit them. That's the plan. Now, in this game, once you have done an action, whether it's fire or it's move or it's run away, you've, you, that's all the more you can do. Um, you can't do anymore. So this guy hasn't done anything yet, but he's not going to. He's going to sit there and wait and see what happens. So they're going to say pass to the Germans now. And they're going to have the Germans. This was the, these guys were the activated units. The Germans now get to what's called react. And when you react, you can't move as far, um, but you can still move, fire, or run away, essentially. <clears throat> and, th and you can only, the important thing is you can only react to something you've seen. So we already said that this guy over here can't see these guys. They're out of his line of sight. So he can't do anything. He's not going to move or do anything initially. These two did see. They're in line of sight, and these guys did something. Even if this guy, for instance, had been in the line of sight, let's just say he was he was here, and this is the activate. If he was here, but he didn't shoot, these guys could not shoot at him because they don't. They're only going to respond to something that they actually saw happen. Okay, so in this case, they saw these, so they're going to do the same thing. Um, well, actually, they're going to split it up a little bit. They are going to these guys. The machine gun are going to fire. And they're gonna fire at this group right here. And let's see what kind of um, number they're gonna get. They are inherent firepower of one. They're a little machine gun. They got a range of 12, which is actually really nice. So 12, six is only a DRM of minus one. So you add minus one to that. These guys, the Americans, are in the woods, so you gotta add another minus one. But you gotta add another minus one because they're being suppressed, because they are being fired at. And now you add all that up, right? Minus three and one is minus two. So that means you put a minus two marker on those guys. So we find our minus two and we put it on these guys. Similarly, these guys are one, two, three, four, five, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six away again. They have a firing of a, a range of 10. So they are gonna have a one as their inherent firepower. It was 10 was their fire was their range. Six is down here, so the DRM is a minus three. So one minus three. A minus one because the guys are in the woods, and another minus one because they are suppressed. Okay? So that is minus three, minus one. So that's a minus five and a one is a minus four. That is the that's the lowest you can use. There aren't any any um, little little numbers for anything less than that. But the point is they're they're still being suppressed, and there's a chance you're gonna hit them, so why not? So you find a minus four, a green minus four, and you put it on those little dudes, okay? Now the Germans say, they, they now, oh, and then these guys fired, I'm sorry. These guys are firing as well. So now you can see nothing's happened yet, but they're all firing at each other. This is simultaneous movement. This is really cool. Now, the, that was the Germans' response. Okay, remember, these guys way over here, can't do anything because they're in the woods and they don't see anything happening. Okay. So the Germans are done with their with their reaction. Now they say to the Americans, okay, now it's time for you to react. Is there anything they can do? Everybody here, these two have already done something, they've done the firing thing. They're shooting. This guy hasn't done anything, but he can't move and do anything spectacular because he hasn't um uh, he hasn't um, been able to, he hasn't seen anything. So if he was up closer here and he could see that these things had happened, see that the Germans had fired, then he could fire at them, but he can't do anything. So right now, there's nothing anyone can do. And so um, really, the only thing to do now is resolve fire. So we will resolve fire on the Americans first. So we'll go with this guy's first. Get our black evil die. 
they got a six minus two is four that's below the six for their cohesion they're fine nothing happened so what I do then is I remove this to show I fired and I tend to remove that because then I know that that's done let's roll Steiner's group onto these guys it's a minus four I roll they get a six again minus four is a two neither of these guys is um, in that range so nothing happened to them either so I remove those from the Germans and from the American things now it's the Americans turn the Americans roll on the machine gun fire first minus three they get a seven minus three is four nothing happens so that's them and finally you get a minus three um, on Steiner's group gets a five minus three is a two again nothing happened okay so his fire action is done okay so that is basically how a firing and a, and a basic thing goes now if that was the end of the turn which we're, we're saying it is you then the attacking team essentially wants to know how long did all that take that was a little firefight nothing actually happened no casualties nothing but how long did it actually take so what you do is you come over here and you roll a dice to see how long it took and there's a little table down here that says time lapse oops a little table down here says time lapse so you roll this and i got a seven that means it took four minutes to have that action occur that means you take your 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 time piece here which is your one minute and you go one two three four it took four minutes so already if we stop the game right now there's no casualties if we stopped it the 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 this points would be the americans are 21 which is what they're what they're or i'm sorry this would be zero okay you'd be off the casualty and it would be four and so far you know whatever that would mean but that's how you that's how you do that now if we go into the next turn what are you going to do the next turn you're going to do the very same thing you are going to um, roll for initiative so German Americans roll Americans get a plus two Germans got a ten Americans got a four a two plus two is four so the Germans get the initiative so now the Germans have the initiative now there's a special rule up here on this random event table that says if you roll a 10 when you're trying to figure out um, uh, initiative die rolls then you have to that group has to have a fate table roll which is what this is so let's see what happens to the Germans some of these are good some of these are bad you got a 10 10 says panic so it says as the sole action of the current game turn all units in a single hex selected by the opposing player and in the line of sight of an enemy combat unit must draw withdraw four hexes along their towards their their end of the of the board whichever is closer so that means that's an awesome random event that happened in this case for the americans the germans still have the initiative but i get to move one unit back um four spaces and what i'm going to do is I'm going to I'm afraid of my of the machine gunners because they got lots of firepower. They can move back four spaces. They're going to go one, two, three, well, four. So they panicked and they moved away. And that was their move for this game turn. So I put a move marker on them. So I know that they're done for that turn. That's it. Even though these even though the Germans in this case are the ones that have the initiative and they're activated, they um, that's it that's their turn for that that little unit okay so now let's let's try something else here let's add a little something extra Germans initiative so the Germans get to go what are they gonna do well they could fire um, because they can see these two they can't see these guys they are going to call for mortar fire however mortars do not are not an action mortar is just a um, it's an additional thing you can do and so in this case I'm gonna say that these guys are gonna call mortar fire on Smith and his group in those trees this is kind of fun okay 
Now, in order to do this, what you do, and the, the scenario calls for it. The scenario will say they get mortar support or something. So I'm going to put what's called a primary marker onto the hex I'm going to hit. So I put a primary marker on Smith's area. I'm going to put a little guy here, a German player. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, called an FO or forward observer. That means he is on here and he is going to, I don't think his platoon is the right one. Oh, it is actually. I'm going to put him right here to show that I'm having, I'm calling mortar fire from these guys onto the Americans. Now, mortar fire is very similar, um, but it has some differences to small arms fire. And you use another table. What you do is you look at first the mortar fire action table. This is an eight centimeter German mortar. And what you're going to have is a primary and a secondary hex. Meaning that this is your primary hex, meaning this is the one that you want to hit. Secondary hex is going to be drift and where things happen to go when you're shooting. Okay, so that's kind of a cool mechanic. So in this case, this says the primary one, meaning the hex that we're going to aim into, I have a, 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 a mortar value of two, or at least starting with a mortar value of two. That means I am going to take this little number. They're red now in this case. That lets you know that it's mortar fire. Here's a two. And this I would put on that primary area. However, there's also modifiers for mortar. An air burst, for instance, is if you're shooting into trees. You shoot into trees, you get a plus one. Okay. Um, density of target means you have too many steps. We don't, there's a very small number of steps. And then the TEM is the train table. I'm not sure how that works because if you go shooting uphill, maybe, but you've already taken into account that you're shooting into woods, why would you then say subtract one because they're in woods? So I'm not sure how that works for mortars yet. Maybe it's just for, maybe it's just for um, uh, um, if you're going up a hill. Because when I look at the, the cost of these things, the woods is a minus one. But I'm not quite sure how that would work with a, with a mortar. So I'm not going to deal with that at the moment. So I might be wrong, but this is what I'm going to do. So now what we said was starts out as two based on the table, um, but it's going to be a three, which is nasty because it, there's a because there's an air burst and you get a one. So I find me a three, and I put it on that American group. So they're probably in a world of hurt. Now you have a secondary meaning in this case the eight centimeter the secondary hex meaning wherever some of the fire drifts. You're going to start it with a zero. That's going to be the, 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 the little piece of cardboard you find says zero. To figure out what the secondary hex is, you roll the dice. So you roll the dice, and you get a seven. Now you come over here. See this thing here? This is a little compass. And if you roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six, you would put that other chit, that other um, number, in this case a zero, over into there. If you got a three, you put it over to this hex. If you put it, I got a two, you put it over in this hex, and so on. If you get a seven or above, it impacts the, the center hex again, your primary hex. So these guys are in a world of hurt. Because that means. That means that they get a zero for the secondary hex, but they're in a they're in the woods again, so it's going to be a plus one. So they get a plus one on here. So they've got two mortar um, fires going on in that same hex. So that's going to be devastating because what a what a uh, that's that's a bummer for the Americans. What that's what I was hoping is, is I was hoping we'd have like drift and it would drift over to here or drift over to here because then you'd hit those guys too, which would be kind of cool. Now, as I said, that does not count as an action for the Germans. All that does is we laid mortar fire down. But what that does mean is these guys are pinned. 
They cannot move. They cannot react. They can't do anything. They can't fire. They can't do anything. They can they can retreat, I think, um, but they can't. They can't. I don't think they can do that yet. Um, so they are just stuck. What's cool is they can't fire now, even when they get to the reaction phase. Even if they see these guys doing something, they can't fire. So now, now the Germans are going to keep going because the Germans haven't even done their really done their turn yet. All they did was put mortar fire down to suppress, which is the kind of the name of the game. You suppress somebody, you're in good shape. So the Germans are going to um, do some firing, I think. Um, these guys over here are going to move in the woods. Now, moving in the woods takes um, non-vehicular one and a half movement points. So these are um, initiative. They got the initiative. This is an activation. So they get three movement points. So they can move one and a half and one and a half. So they do that. They move. And I put on their little guy here. Oops. I put on their little thing that they've moved. So I know they've moved. They've done their action. Okay. That's wonderful. Now notice, <laughs> this is interesting. When it comes time to say reaction from the Americans, no one can fire at him. Even though he's right at the edge and you could see him, like these guys could have seen him. These guys probably not. No, I guess not. This is the only guys that could see him, but he can't because uh, um, because he's he's under um, um, suppression by the mortar, so he won't be able to fire at him. So that's this is like a free move. This guy moved and he's really safe. This is pretty awesome. Okay, these guys are going to just open fire, and they're going to open fire on those guys there. So they're going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, ten. Is the range? So 10 with a 6 is minus 3. They have an inherent value of 1, so it's minus 2. And they're in the woods, which is helps them, so it's a minus 3. So this is going to be a minus 3 on these guys. Okay, And that means these guys have done a fire. Okay, So now, all the Germans have done their action. Um, you know, this little guy, remember, had to move because he had a fate card that moved him back, or a fate occurred table. These guys just fired, and these guys maneuvered. So they're done. They can't do anything. So they pass to the Americans. They say, okay, Americans, you react. So now they can only move two steps or two, two, two movement places. They can fire or they can retreat. Um, in this case, again, these guys can do nothing. They're just stuck there. They're pinned in that hex. These guys again didn't see anything. If you if you look and see, look at the at the the um, range and all that. There's there's nothing here. If these guys are going through uh, woods, so they can't see them, so they can't do anything again. They can do some limited movement, which we're not going to deal with right now. But right now they can't do anything. These are the only guys that can. They can't see these guys because they go through a hex. The only guys they can see that did anything are these guys. That's it. So they're going to say, we're going to fire back at you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six. They have an inherent firepower of one, but they're an eight. Six away is a minus three. So minus three plus one is a minus two. But they are in the woods, so it's minus three again, and it's minus four because they are suppressed, remember? So we put a minus four on those guys over there, okay? So now the Americans say to the Germans, you react now. Now you have two movements, or you can fire, or you can move back. They've all done everything, and because we have these markers, we know, we remember that they've done everything. So there's nothing we can do. The Germans can't do anything. They pass the Americans. The Americans can't do anything. The only American group that could do anything is this guy back here. And I think I haven't figured out the rules yet. He could actually do a very limited maneuver, but he can't fire or anything because he hasn't seen anybody do anything. Um, so anyway, what we'll do is now um, go through and, and um, look at the fire and see what happens. So we'll do the boring fire first. We'll fire on the Germans. The Americans fire on the Germans. They get a two minus four is negative, 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 negative. So nothing happens to those Germans. 
and um, I should have put on an American fire thing here, but I forgot. But anyway, put that away. Now, the more fun parts over here, let's do the, the second most boring one. Let's do this minus three for the, the Germans firing. They get a seven, minus three is four. Again, this is a six, so these guys are fine. They're not harmed. The Germans did their firing. Now, let's do the granddaddy here. There's two um, impact hex things here. We'll have the red, the, the green one will be the three, and the black one will be the one. So this one's three, and this one's the one. One and three is four. Does it do anything to these guys? No, that's lucky. How about this one? Four and one is five. Didn't do any of these guys either. That is so lucky, because mortar fire is oof, painful. So what you do is, what I do is, um, I figure that they've done their shooting, okay? So I remove these things. I then um, remove the initial guy here. He's the, the, the officer who's gonna, who's gonna do stuff later. Uh, but he's the, he's the forward observer, so he's kinda done. And now what you do with mortar stuff is you come back here You come back here, and you put them into a uh, um, mortar um, uh, pending thing. So you put them in here to say they can't be used the next turn unless you roll a uh, minus equal to or minus four, or equal to or less than or equal to a four on a single die. Then they would be available, and you could stick them down into here, and then they could you could use them the next turn. Now, one thing they could do is something called extending, okay? So let's pretend we try that. They fired their mortar, and it didn't do as big a damage as they hoped. So what they're going to do is roll and see if they can extend the mortar fire. If you get a four or minus, it's extended. Four or less, it's a two. So they get to keep the primary marker on that hex, this guy is turned over from his initial to what's called final. I put him back here. And then we, you know, basically you do another, another series of, of fire on them. You do another, another support thing. So another, another mortar thing, um, shooting ability. So you do the same thing. It's an eight centimeter. It's got a two, but now it's a three because it's in the woods. So you go ahead and put a three on there. Now you roll the dice for the secondary, which is going to be a zero. And you roll the dice, you get a five. And if you come over here, a five is down there. So that means you put your zero and there's no other modifiers on it because this is an open hex. You put your zero where that five would be, which is right here. So if there had been, and then you, and then the next turn you would end up, you gotta wait then. These guys are pinned again, which is awesome, and you wait um, to do this, I think, on the next turn. But now had there been somebody over here, for instance, they'd have been in trouble. So that's how mortar fire in general works, okay? Um, I hope this is helpful so far. Um, it's a really fun game, I tell you. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So let's sit, pretend that was the end of that turn. What do you do? You go up here. We said it was four minutes before. Everything's fine, the German initiative. The, 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 the Germans roll, or whoever rolls, they get a four. That's a three to five, so that's three more minutes. So you go one, two, three. So that's taken seven minutes to do this whole thing that we've had happen which is pretty cool. So this is generally how this works, and it's the action-reaction section of things, how it, how it comes together. And I think it's a genius way to kind of combat simultaneous combat and also confusion of combat, but it makes it so 
um, it, it actually it makes it so you want to go out and try things because um, uh, you're going to be shooting at the same time. And then this track is important because it gets you moving. You don't just sit around and fire back and forth and slug it out because you, you, <laughs> you, you don't want this to go up to a really high time. Otherwise, it's going to add to your, 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 your casualty piece and then you're going to end up with, with losing the game. So this is just a real simple setup to show you how it works in general. I hope this made sense. I got a long way to go to know, understand all the directions. Um, but man, it's a lot of fun so far. I'm really enjoying the game.